Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat basketball channel. The NBA trade deadline had a flurry of big moves. I believe the amount of moves was in the 50 plus range. And so that really shifted the landscape uh, in the league. And a majority of these moves were made within the Western Conference. Not a lot of action um, in the East. Uh, Miami was one of the few teams that um, kept their entire roster pretty much the same. They got rid of Dwayne Dedman in a second pick for just cash consideration, so they didn't get a player in return, so it wasn't technically a trade. But that was the only move we made, um, which was pretty surprising because the Heat are in desperate need of a new guard. Um, Gabe Vincent's been playing a lot better with Kyle Lowry being absent for the last few games with knee soreness, and he's going to be out for the next three weeks or so um which is kind of surprising but also not at the same time um not sure why you would miss that much time with the sore knee so <clears throat> the heat were trying to actively shop and trade kyle lowry they were unsuccessful um so that was announced and so yeah not not really sure where the team stands with kyle lowry is he gonna come back into the starting lineup when he's healthy or are they gonna continue to play with gabe vincent <clears throat> not entirely sure gabe's been playing Decent as a starter. He's been averaging 15 points a game in 11 starts. The Heater 8-3. So we'll see what happens. But Miami was trying to trade him. Nothing happened. So they were one of the only three teams, them, the Bulls, and the Cavs, that didn't make a move. So while this was super disappointing as a Heat fan, they could still make moves through the wonderful, magnificent, awesome buyout market. So the Heat is, they're not ready to rebuild. Uh, they have a decent team. They've kept the core. They've ran it back, minus P.J. Tucker last year. Um, they sit at 30 and 25. They're sixth place in the Eastern Conference. They have a couple games that are going to be tough coming up, especially tonight against the Denver Nuggets. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, the buyout market, the the thrift store damaged goods players. Um, there's a decent amount of them, and and one um, player in particular. Um, has drawn interest I guess I guess by, both by the Heat and he's also interested in the Heat so when the Lakers sent Russell Westbrook to Utah before the trade deadline no one expected that he would stay there he hasn't officially been bought out by the Jazz yet but that expectation is that he will soon be and whenever that does happen the indication is that he will join either the Chicago Bulls or the Miami Heat so earlier in the week ESPN's Adrian uh, Wojnarowski reported that the Chicago Bulls were a frontrunner for um, signing Westbrook. So um, Bleacher Reports' Chris Haynes also reported, though, that the Bulls and the Heat would be his two top choices. Clippers have also been tied to Russell Westbrook. They've been mentioned as a possibility as well. Um, they just signed Bones Highland, so not sure um, if they have that need. But if they want to add more depth, it wouldn't be the worst move. Um, Paul George has said that he welcomes um, a reunion and the opportunity to play again with Russell Westbrook as they both played together back in the day for the OKC Thunder. So again, Russell Westbrook has not been bought out yet by the Jazz. He could still stay there technically, and he's making $47 million this season. So if he wants to make all of that, um, then he might stay with the rebuilding Jazz, but it doesn't make sense because the Jazz are looking to give their young new core some time together and extra minutes so it wouldn't really make sense but he could be there as like a savvy vet um to help guide that that team and so i don't know we'll see but if even if he gets bought out for less he'll be able to recoup that with whatever team he signs whether that's the heat clippers or the bulls so who knows um in my opinion i think he'd probably go to the clippers Bulls and then Heat in that order. Westbrook, Westbrook, of course, played for the Bulls head coach, Billy Donovan, um, in OKC. And so there is that history there and that familiarity. And uh, Donovan sounds like he's expected um, to reach out to him. He's excited about the prospect of reuniting with his former point guard. Um, so, yeah, I'm as a Heat fan, I'm not entirely sure. How I think about this opportunity here I could go either way I'm leaning towards I don't think it's going to move the needle for the Miami Heat and doesn't really fit but also I understand that we need some depth and we need to infuse new players on this roster 
Um, so yeah, it's tough. Um, it's tough to say whether a 34 year old former all-star nine time all-star for that matter, um, can continue to, I guess, rejuvenate his role as a, a sixth man. Cause I think there's two options here with Miami. One, he's going to need to start. So what's the, the history or not the history, but what's the, what's the, uh, decision with Kyle Lowry? Is he going to be coming off the bench? Is he going to not play for the rest of the year? Not sure. Are we going to sit him out with, and shut him down for the season based on this injury? Who knows? So we can have to start him because I think if he comes off the bench, he's not going to fit well with Victor Oladipo. Both of them are good, I guess, attacking the rim guards, but they're both not the best shooters. They both can't shoot three that well, so they're not going to be able to spread the floor together. So I think... Westbrook would have to start and play next to Tyler, um, or Victor Oladipo has to start um, with Tyler Hero, and he can come off the bench. Russ can come off the bench with Gabe Vincent. Um, yeah, again, the fit is not going to be, it's not going to fit like a glove, so we'll see. But Westbrook is still kind of a good player, even though he's just super inefficient. He's still averaging 16 points a game, six rebounds, seven and a half assists, and a steal. The big issue, too, as well, besides him may not being a fit with the Heat based on their needs, is he's a turnover machine. He averages 3.5 turnovers per game. And his inefficiency is just not what the Heat needs. He's shooting 41% from the field and 29.6% from three. The Heat need a big man. They need a either backup center, they need a four. Um, then I think they need a guard. I think they need a four first, then a backup center and a guard. I think that's the order that I would say um, is the most important for the Heat, in my opinion. So he doesn't, again, fix the need. Like, just if he starts, then you have three players, him, Bam, and Jimmy, who would be a good trio, but they can't shoot. They, like, operate in the same area right like within that mid-range and so they need someone that's going to be able to spread the floor so again he would have to probably come off the bench and again like the best thing he could provide is just like some tenacity um you know a former nine-time all-star um someone who has kind of that miami heat culture and mentality in him who's um super like energetic ta like talented obviously but also super intense that's like the embodiment of what a heat player looks like his defense is overrated he's not a bad defender he's good at stealing and playing the passing lanes but like the last few years he's not that good of a defender one-on-one -on -one. so the heat culture is about having two-way players so of course not all of our players are great at defense but they're expected to improve so yeah not entirely sure about the fit but I mean, I think that he could use the depth, so I can go either way on this as long as we don't pay him a lot. But, I mean, he does average 16 points, 6 and 7, so, I mean, that could be beneficial to the Heat. Who knows? I'm willing to experiment for the rest of the season. Um, I wouldn't sign him to more than a one-year deal, perhaps, or a half-a-season deal, however that works out. So I'm open-minded, but I just don't think it's the best fit. So I wouldn't be upset if he didn't sign with the Heat. So... Yeah, just not sure what the rest of Heat Nation, how you guys feel. I feel like I'm sure it's probably like 70% want him and 30% probably don't. I don't know. But I guess I can go either way. Um, I wouldn't be upset if we signed him. I wouldn't be stoked if we signed him. So pretty neutral when it comes to buying out or obtaining the bought out Russell Westbrook. So yeah, more to come. We'll see what happens within the next week or so. Russell is going to take some time. He first needs to be bought out by the Jazz. Once that happens, we could reassess to see what's happening and where his head's at. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Take care, everyone.